All right. Hey, everybody. Um, welcome back. I thought we would try to do another one of the modules of uh, in the Apex Basics and Database Challenges. And I thought today we would go down to uh, challenge number three, manipulate records with DML. Uh, use S objects has some great stuff in there, especially about how to typecast. And we might do a, uh, a video about that later on. But there's no challenge in that one. It's just a quiz. Um, so I thought we'd work through these uh, the modules with actual challenges first. We might come back to that one or just show how to uh, how to cast your data types um, later on in one of these other videos. It's a uh, very, very useful skill to know and to understand. So that's it. Let's uh, let's take off and uh, let's take a look at manipulate records with DML. And uh, once again, obviously, uh, I'm going to scroll through all of these other incredibly important things to know, especially about bulk DML. Uh, critical that you understand that you really don't ever want to do DML one at a time. You insert things into a collection and then insert the collection, um, or I insert. I mean create, upsert. Anyway, your DML should always be done with a collection. It should never be done with individual records. Uh, maybe we'll do another video about exactly why that is. Doing some database methods, again, uh, very important. But what we're going to we're just going to get down here to uh, scroll, 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 retake the challenge. And let's read through our requirements, like always. Um, create an Apex class that inserts a new account named after an incoming parameter. If the account is successfully inserted, the method should return the account record. If a DML exception occurs, the method should return no. All right, if you're sort of like DML is your database manipulation language, uh, and that's all the, the normal sales work we do. We, we insert records, we update records, upsert, right? you know, uh, delete. So uh, DML, very important thing to understand. So we've got to name a class, uh, account handler, has to have a public static method, uh, insert new account, and maybe this one, or maybe we'll do a, a method that's not static too, so you can see the difference. Um, accept an incoming string as a parameter, which we use to create the account name, insert the account, return the record, and also accept an empty string and catch the failed DML, return no. All right, I'm gonna go over that because uh, understanding try catch blocks, it is an important skill. And it's something that took me a while to understand. So uh, let's, uh, without any further ado, let's get in here and uh, let's start uh, doing some coding. So back to uh, the undisputed king of Salesforce IDEs, uh, IntelliJ with Illuminated Cloud. And we needed a, uh, I'm gonna scroll down, let me uh, get back my requirements here. What did we have to name this? Account handler. All right, we're gonna just copy and paste that. V account handler. All right, so we have it. It is in the public scope. And up here, your access modifiers. I want to stress this is kind of some boilerplate stuff where public private. You do need to know it, especially if you're studying for your PD1 exam. But Apex, like Java, is kind of a verbose language with a lot of stuff you have to type to do fairly trivial things. Uh, and if you're just getting started, um, this used to really tie me in knots, is just remembering how to kind of type up these access modifiers, return types. Uh, it, it's muscle memory, it just comes with practice, uh, but don't uh, don't let it get you too frustrated when you are, when you're starting off. Just if you were coding along with me, just uh, just type it in and accept right now without worrying too much about what that actually means. All right, then we need another, a method, a public static method, and called insert, uh -oh, started with, we're always, uh, our method names are always started with a lowercase. Insert new account. Right? And we always, methods, always parentheses, curly braces. Right? And so if you're learning IDs, right, so I can see this red line under there. That's IntelliJ. That's its way of telling me there's something wrong with my code. And that's because it's saying yeah, you either have to have a return type in here or put in the word void. And void means there is no return type. In this case, we know from our uh, requirements that we need to return an account. So we've got our account, and we know that our method has to have a uh, incoming string as a parameter, which will be used for the account name. Again, we need to type in string uh, because we always have to declare our variable types in Apex. 
So string, and then we can name this whatever we want. So I mean, we could name it, you know, A, right? If we wanted to, that would work. It would compile. Our code would run. Uh, it would be terrible code, though, right? So that's a convey. You always want to give your, your code descriptive names to make it easier for the person that comes after you or quite honestly yourself when you come back to the code you wrote a few days ago, a few months ago. I do try to figure out uh, how this even works. As uh, The more descriptive your stuff, the uh, the better off you are. I got a typo in this. You'd like this would fail in trailhead insert new account string and we're going to say string is account name all right now so the first thing we're going to do let's say so we're just going to instantiate a new account um and renewative instantiate is just a fancy word for we are going to create an account s object in salesforce so how we're going to do that we are going to just say right, account and I'm going to just name it uh, A, um, maybe not best practice right here. Sometimes that can be kind of a little bit of a Salesforce convention is account A, lead L. And we have to set that equal to something. And we're going to say account A is equal to a new account. All right. And then there's, so there's a couple ways we could do this. I'm going to show you two ways. So we account A. We need to set that name equal to the string that came in as our parameter. So we could type in A. For the name of our account we could use dot notation and you see my id is helping me out here i can see all the uh, the fields that i can access so we just want to name the account i can use this and i can just access the name value that way and i can set it equal to the account name parameter in my method i'm going to show you another way to do this so this this is fine this works and i, I to me it's really a matter of choice how you like to do this um, we're going to create a second account and I'm going to name it, I'm just going to call it second account. All right. And we're also going to set that equal to a new account. So in these parentheses here, that is your account constructor. And those are values that you can pass in, uh, when that account is being constructed, when it's being created in memory, essentially. So we could also access these values right here. So instead of typing in the name below, I could just do something like, name equals account name. Either one of these are fine. Either one of these are gonna do exactly what we want, all right? Um, and I'm gonna leave them up here. I'm only going to insert one of them so you can see how this works. But either one of these are perfectly acceptable ways to write your code. I tend to, I probably tend to put stuff in the constructor more often because uh, I think it's a little more readable, but you do, uh, you do it your way, all right? So now what we need to do is we need to insert this account and we need it in our requirements to catch any errors. So what we need to do, we need to create a try catch block. So we're gonna type by the words try. So try is an apex reserve word. Uh, you can't use it. It, it, it has specific meaning to the language. I mean, we're gonna try something. After try, always comes curly braces. And I eventually I'll actually type in curly braces. And after a try catch block, always comes catch. Parentheses and curly braces. So let's go up to our, so try and say, hey, now, now that we've done this, try to do this thing. And what we want to try to do is insert. So insert again is an apex reserve word. Insert A. Insert, a, insert the account that we just created. And we also want to return that account. Return also a keyword or a reserve word. So we're going to insert the account into the database and we're going to return that account back to the calling to the caller. Now catch the code in your catch block will only run if something goes wrong. So what you for this case, we're going to type in exception. An exception is a built-in Apex object. And we are just going to say catch exception. We're going to name our exception E. And this, again, we could call it whatever we want. I'm going to call it exception E. Uh, and that's kind of, again, kind of a standard developer uh, convention. So we've caught that exception. Now, for our challenge to pass, all we have to do is return no. And that should pass right now. But actually, this is re and it, your code will pass. It'll pass the challenge. But this is actually pretty bad practice. If you are going to put stuff in a try catch block, 
you want to do something to handle your errors. Um, otherwise, what happens, sometimes you have code that's failing and nobody ever knows about it um, because it's failing inside a catch block and it's not telling anybody anything. So typically, I have done that, I mean, you know, send out an email, create a new case. There's all kinds of things we could do. Uh, in this case, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, send a message to the debug log. All right. And we're going to do a couple things. I'm going to show you. First of all, we're just going to say, hello from, well, from the catch block. We should only see that code run if we go into our catch block. And our exception object also has some very useful um, methods built into it. Uh, I use these a lot, say, if I'm doing something like building a, uh, a REST API, right? And I want to tell the person that's calling it, you got an error, and this is why you got an error. Pass back the methods. Or in this case, if we were building some maybe a Visual Force page, Lightning Web Component is doing this, and it's uh, creating a creating accounts. We'd want to send something back to the user that this account failed to create and this is why. Um, so we're just going to go, we're just going to do system debug for now for what we're going to do. And we're going to, so we'll say our message and we're going to do E dot. So we can see E dot get message. That's a built in to the exception. And I'm going to do another one system dot debug. Actrace. When I like to get that, e dot get stack trace string. But you can see we've got a few here: get cause, get line number, get type name. A lot of really useful stuff to send back. And however you are doing that, to know why you got an error and what caused it. All right. So we are going to compile that. and open up our handy dandy anonymous Apex window, which is just gonna let us work with this. So we're just going to uh, try to call our code, see if it works. So we're gonna say account, test account, and we're gonna set that because we know that if we call our code, it should return an account. Um, equals account handler, and we can access that method, right? Because it is a static method. Insert new account string, and we're going to name it. The account name is test account. And then uh, let's just, we'll put that inside a debug log so we can see it. Account. We'll, we'll run our code. All right. And let's just see what we got in our debug log so we can see that ran and that we created an account. And it's test account, and it's got an ID. And so let's, uh, all right, now let's try to call our exception. Let's see what happens there. So let's uh, pass in an empty string. Delete that out. And we're going to run our code again. And we, now you can see down here, we look at our debug log. Hello from the catch block. And our debug message is the insert failed. Required, and it's telling us the required fields are missing. Our name field is missing. And our stack trace, it's saying, hey, this failed on the account handler. Insert new account, line 13. Now, right there. So now we can just go back and look at our code and see this is where the failure happened. So a lot of really useful stuff that you can do with that. And last thing, I'm just going to show you while we're working on this. I think we have a little bit of time. Is the difference between doing this as a static method and a uh, and not and not a static method part. So let's just do um, so we're still gonna return an account. And We just name it insert new account fill. And otherwise, it's going to be this. Um, I'm going to say string account name. And uh, we'll just say return. Let's, let's just do a uh, set account a equals new account name equals 
count name. And we're going to return A. So the difference is, I'm sorry, so we'll, the first one, we did not have to instantiate, we did not have to create an account handler class to call the insert new account method. Now, because it is no longer a static method, we are going to have to instantiate the class. So, actually, so now for this to run, we'll go back, we'll open up our anonymous Apex window. So I say if we uh, if we just do count test two equals count handler, we don't see that method, right? We don't see we only see our static method. But if we instantiate our account handler class, because so we're going to say account handler, we're just going to name it handler equals new. So now we've instantiated our account handler class and we can access the non-static methods inside it. So if I say handler dot insert no account string, we've got that. So I'm gonna go back, I'm just gonna test this out. I'm gonna uh, set that to insert new account. And I'm going to call it, we're going to name it instance method. System debug, and we'll see, we're going to say, just so we can see what we got there, plus count three. Run our code. And we've got an error. So let's see what's going on here. Method does not exist or incorrect signature. Insert new account from. Did I? File failure lines. There we go. I did some, something just didn't compile right. Okay. So count three, now we can see uh, account equals account, and then I've got our name there of instance method. All right, so I hope that was helpful to everybody. We saw static methods, we saw instance methods, we saw DML, database manipulation language. Uh, we saw what uh, we try catch, how to handle, and some of the methods that are built into the Salesforce exception object. And uh, we saw working with uh, with an error in real time. So I try to do these uh, in real time, right? So if I make a mistake, you can see that and how we handle that because coding is not perfect. You're going to make mistakes. All right. Well, I hope that was helpful to everybody. And if it is, please uh, subscribe and uh, click like on the video. Thank you.